Dude, that looks sick. What are your settings? Well, that brings up a good point, and that's one thing we're going to talk about today, that it's not about the welder, it's about the welder. So we're going to run through a couple different, vastly different settings and show you how it's not the machine, but it's your technique that really makes a difference. So you can see on this run, we've got nice, clean, shiny weld, got a really nice shine to this. Our tow line is nice and smooth. You know, we don't have any like peaks and valleys on the tow line, so our toe's nice and tied in. It's a good hot run. You know, we don't have any, anything crazy going on with the bead, no pepper. So this run was ran at 35% balance, 161 hertz with advanced square wave, a balanced amplitude, and 180 amps on the machine. All right, so on my torch, I'm running a 20 series. I'm running an eighth inch tungsten, 2% lanthanated. I'm also running an Edge Quartz number seven gas lens and a, a CK diffuser for the gas lens. So I'm gonna take this torch set up. I'm gonna put a standard cup with a collet and collet body, same eighth inch 2% lanthanated tungsten, uh, but we'll change our gas flow around right now. I'm running about 20 CFH on this cup. I'll switch down to a five standard and about 12 to 14 CFH. We'll change the machine settings around and we're gonna make another run and show you that I can get about 98% of the same result with just different settings on the machine. And it's about my technique and not so much what the machine is doing. We're running 332nd tungsten versus our eighth inch, a number five standard cup versus a number seven gas lens. Now we're gonna go over and change our gas flow in our machine settings. We'll make another run that's gonna be pretty much the same as our first one. Let's go to the machine. All right, so this first run, I had 181 amps. There are 161 hertz at 35% balance. So I'm gonna take the machine, whoops, go down to 161 amps. We're gonna change from advanced square wave. Let's go to trapezoid. On both sides, we're gonna go down to 81 hertz, so half of our frequency. And let's go balance. We'll drop that down 10 points to 25% balance. So we've changed our amperage, our waveform, cut our frequency in half, took 10 points off our balance. We changed our cup, our tungsten. Now let's hit our pedal real quick. So we're gonna bring this gas flow from about 22 we're gonna go about 15. All right, so now that we've changed literally everything about our setup except the base material in our filler rod, which we're running 332nd, 5554 on some 090 uh, 6061 aluminum plate, we've changed everything. Now let's make another run. We'll have the arc shot, and then at the end we'll compare the two runs and kind of show you guys the similarities and the differences between them. Let's weld. All right, so here's our second run. Totally different settings. Uh, you can see we still got nice clean bead. It's got some shine to it. Uh, the etching looks pretty much identical. Uh, it's, a, it's the same weld. So what we're gonna do is shuffle them around. And we'll follow the ball. Which weld is which? Which did we Weld with the eighth inch tungsten versus the 332nd, the standard cup versus the gas lens, the high frequency versus the lower frequency, high balance versus low balance. They are pretty much identical. So the point of this isn't, you know, it's never about gas lens versus standard cup or anything like that or gas flow and tungsten size. This is about technique. And, you know, I've got a lot of years of running aluminum. That's a lot of what my videos focus on is aluminum because that's what I feel the most confident in to share my, my knowledge with you. And even as I'm running these, I'm not thinking about what I'm doing really. I, I've ran it so long that I can anticipate via the, the bead what I need to do. And so I can run two drastically different setups. And as I'm welding, I know that I need to run a little bit more torch angle, 
or I need to add a little bit more filler rod, or you know, I need to increase my arc length if I want a set bead. And that's a lot of information to go over and try to, to pull apart. We could make, you know, we've made tons of videos in the past. We could do a five hour video just about, you know, how your arc length affects your bead. But it's just one thing I wanna show you guys to, uh, to not get hung up on is the machine settings. There are some settings that are wrong like with our machines, you wouldn't run a run 5% balance or 90% balance. There's, there's a range on the machine that works well, but there's not a setting that is perfect. It depends on your cup setup, your cup size, your tungsten size, the weld, you know, the actual weld joint you're doing. Um, but that's what we wanted to show you because one of the things you see like on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok, somebody runs a good weld and there's seven, eight, 10, 15, 20 comments. What are your settings? What settings did you run that at? Oh, that looks awesome. I wish I could, I well like that. What are your settings? And that's what I wanted to show you guys. It's not gas flow, it's not cup size, it's not tungsten size, it's not balance or frequency. It's the welder. It's not the welder, it's the welder. And so finding a, a setting that is kind of in the middle, you know, a 30%, 35% balance, um, 120 to 160 hertz, and then finding the matching gas flow for your cup, that's what's important. You can play with that and then tweak out from there and find what works for you and what doesn't work for you. But there's no one right setting. And copying someone's setting, if you're not copying their exact technique, you're not gonna copy their results. Just something to think about. All right, now that we've pickled that cucumber, I'm Jesse McCollum with Everlast Welders. Remember, weld mean, well green.